have a 66-year-old retired African-American man who presents to his doctor with difficulty urinating, so reduced urinary flow, and hematuria. His past medical history includes hypertension, and for that he takes enalapril 10 milligrams a day. The patient's father had lung cancer at the age of 73 years. The patient undergoes a blood test and is found to have a PSA of 9.8 nanograms per milliliter. He has a biopsy of his prostate that shows Gleason 4 plus 3 adenocarcinoma. The patient opts to go through with a robotic assisted radical prostatectomy with pelvic lymph node dissection. The path report shows that he has PT3B disease with focal extracapsulary extension but negative margins. He does have lymph node involvement, but he does not have metastatic disease. His post-surgical PSA is 0.64 nanograms per deciliter. The patient undergoes adjuvant radiation therapy alongside luprolide acetate, and his PSA drops to undetectable levels. In January 2014, we have a patient who's an African-American male, retired, who presents with difficulty urinating, decreased urinary stream, as well as hematuria. His past medical history includes hypertension, for which he takes enalapril 10 milligrams a day. So this is the case of a man who's African-American and has at least intermediate risk prostate cancer based on his Gleason score of seven. Pathologically, he has increased risk of cancer recurrence based on his positive lymph nodes. And indeed, after the surgery, he has a residual PSA. So clearly, the surgery didn't get all the disease. He undergoes adjuvant radiation therapy alongside luprolide um, in an attempt to cure his cancer in case some of the cancer is left over in the pelvis. However, you can't tell if it's been cured unless you withdraw the luprolide and, and see if the PSA remains undetectable or not. In the United States, most prostate cancer is found localized, in part because of screening with the PSA. However, that has been controversial lately, and we've seen patients presenting a little later in their disease course. If someone presents to the clinic with um, hematuria or difficulty urinating, the PSA is no longer a screening test, it's actually a diagnostic test. So his presentation of prostate cancer is pretty classic for someone who comes to the clinic because of symptoms and doesn't have the prostate cancer detected by PSA. I agree with the initial testing done in this case. First part was checking a PSA, which was clearly elevated, and the second part was doing a biopsy, and both those are very appropriate. The initial treatment in this case seems reasonable to me. There's some debate over starting with surgery versus starting with radiation, but it's not entirely clear which way is the best way to go. So I'm, I'm in support of what was done here. Once ADT is started, I see the patient every three months. It's my clinical practice to give every three month luprolide shots, which are 22.5 milligrams, and check in with the patient each time. If a patient's really anxious about the side effects though, I might see them one month after starting just to check in, but typically every three months.